Hi everyone, it's Aleem here. In this video, we're going to be looking at using index and match, as well as the count ifs function with wildcards. First of all, let's talk about index and match to look up data. Before we do that, let's go back to a function you've probably seen many, many times, the VLOOKUP function. The way the VLOOKUP function is set up is equals VLOOKUP, the thing you're looking up, the place you're looking it up from, the array, the column index you want, so which column you're looking for, and then whether you want an exact match or a partial match. That is, whether you're going to use false or true. So how would you find, in this particular table, the name of the employee that matches the employee ID A201? And you'd say equals VLOOKUP, A201 in quotes, because you're actually looking for that particular string, from A1 to B4, or you could actually say from A2 to B4, that doesn't really matter, we don't need to include the top row there. We want the name, and that's in the second column. And then we want an exact match, so we're going to say false. And that would give us Smith, John. Now this is useful when you have ordered data, and when the lookup item is in the first column. But what if you wanted to find the employee number for Babs, Mike? To do that, you'd need to use two functions together. One is called index, and the other is called match. The index function returns the contents of a cell at a particular row or column reference. The index function works as follows, equals index, array, so the, the table you're looking up from, and then which row and which column you're looking for. If you've ever played the game Battleship as a kid, and it's like A3, well you're going to go in column A, three rows down. In this case, we're going to say equals index of A2 to B4, so we're defining the table starting in row 2, column A, so from A2 all the way to B4. You want the thing in the third row and in the first column. So equals index A2 to B4, comma 3, comma 1 would return A206. Now usually we don't know the row, so we need to look up which row we actually want, and to do that we're going to use a function called match. What the match function does is it returns a relative row number in a table that you specify. So equals match, quote, Babs, comma, Mike, from B2 to B4, and then we want an exact match, so comma zero, that would return three. And a quick plug for MrExcel.com, there is a really good tutorial at the link that's shown here on the screen. Now that you understand the index and the match functions, let's put them together. What we're looking for is a function that says equals index a2 to a4, comma 3, comma 1. But if we don't know what row we're looking for, we're going to use the match function to give us the number 3 instead of just typing in 3. So instead of 3, we're going to use match babs, comma mike, b2 to b4, comma 0, and sub that right into the formula equals index of a2 to a4, match babs, comma mike, in b2 to b4, comma 0, and then we want comma 1. The comma 1 specifies that we're looking for the thing in the first column of the table we specified. So our index function here is only in column A, but you can use index across multiple columns in an array. So if you're doing that, then you have to specify which column you want as well. If we put anything other than 1 here, this would be undefined, because we really only have one column in this particular data set. Let's take a look at an example. In this spreadsheet, what we have in column A are a series of names. And these happen to be the students sitting in the front row of my last lecture. So we've got John, Mike, Frank, Michelle, Ruby, Kayla, Avi, and Khalid. We've got some random salaries that I generated, anywhere from $60,000 up to $250,000. And those are some fictitious salaries here. And we're going to use the index function first. If I type in equals index, A1 to A8, and then I say I want the third row, Right, our row number is 3. Because I'm only working within one column here, I don't need to specify a column number. When I hit enter, I get the name Frank. Frank was the third item in the array that I defined. Now I could have also said equals index A1 to B8. So here I'm specifying this entire table. And if I'm defining the entire table, I would need to say I want the third row, but I would need to specify that I'm looking for the thing in the first column, right? Because I want the name. If you are going to go from A1 to B8, then here you would need to specify which column number you're looking for as well. Let's take a quick look at the match function. 
if I say equals match 89,707 from B1 to B8, and here I'm specifying that I want an exact match. The match type can be lesser than or greater than as well, and if you want to replicate the functionality of VLOOKUP equals true, you'll use 1 here instead of 0. So what the match function is doing here is it's going to look in this table, and relative to the table, the place where it finds 89,707 is the first, second, it's the third row in that particular table. Finally, I can put these two things together to return the name of the employee who matches the salary that I type in this box over here. Once again, I'm going to color my inputs as blue and I can type in any salary I want, let's say 62005, and we should see the name Ruby appear down over here. So to show you how this would work, I'm going to say equals index, open a bracket. Now I could either define the entire table or I could say I'm just looking for a name, so I'll go with column A. A1 to A8, the row number I'm looking for is where I find the salary in cell E8. So what I'm going to say is match, the thing that I'm looking for is whatever is in this cell over here. My lookup array is the range B1 to B8. And the match type I'm looking for here is an exact match. So I type in zero. I close the bracket. I close the other bracket. And I hit enter. And you'll see that I get the name Ruby. If I type in the salary for anyone else, let's try Frank. So 89707. And I'll get the name Frank. So we can type in any salary there and we will get the right output. Notice here if I type in a salary that doesn't match anybody, it's going to give me an NA or a not found because there the match function was unable to find a match in the table that I was looking up the salaries from. We can use something called validation to minimize input errors by whoever we send our spreadsheets to. So let's take a look at the next example here. By the way, a useful keyboard shortcut there is control page down to switch between tabs. So once again, we've got Frank and we've got the number three here. We've got our salary in cell, in this case, E7 equals index. The array we're looking in is that, and we're looking for the name of the employee, or we're looking to return the name of the employee. We'll get the row number using the match function, so equals match. The thing we're looking up is this salary over here, and we're looking that up in this array here. We want an exact match. Close the bracket, close the bracket, hit enter. Now, what I wanted to show you here is I can control the input that people are allowed to put into this cell in cell E7 over here. And the way I can do that is with what's called validation. To do that, we'll click on data. We'll go to data validation. Click on data validation. Under settings, go to allow and choose list. Now there's lots of things you can limit over here, but in this case we're choosing list. The source of the list, we'll choose the salaries over here, B1 to B8, and then say OK. What that does is it gives you this little drop down over here, and when you click on it, the only things that you're allowed to choose from are the salaries that were in the list of acceptable salaries. So now we can choose any salary here. We'll get the appropriate name of the person who earned that salary. Let's take a look at one more example. In this last example, I've updated it a little bit. We've still got the names of those people here in the first column. I've got annual sales. I'm actually going to give this a name, annual sales. Again, this is a made up number. This doesn't really make sense. An accounting professor, for example, won't have sales that they're trying to generate. Neither would an engineer. But again, just humor me for a minute. What we're going to do is we're going to calculate the amount of bonus that each of these people earn. And the way we're going to compute the bonus, according to this example here, is by looking up how much they earned in annual sales and then using the bonus structure. If they earned at least $50,000, but not more than 80, then their bonus percentage would be 1% and so on. 
So we need to calculate the bonus. To do that over here, we're going to say equals VLOOKUP. The lookup value is the sales amount. The lookup range is this table array over here. I've defined it as table one. If you didn't, you could use F4 to lock in your reference. The column we're looking for is column number two. We want that percentage. And here we're going to specify that we want a true match. We're not looking for an exact match. We want a true match. And this will give us the percentage. We still need to multiply that percentage by their annual sales. So times, and then click on annual sales. When you hit enter, we'll get $7,492. And what that's saying is $149,835 matches 5%. 5% of their annual sales gives you $7,492. Now we can take this and drag it all the way down, but we'll do that in just a second. The next thing we have to figure out is what would be the next bonus category. Now to do this, we're again going to use index and match, but this is not as trivial as just looking it up because now we don't want to find the bonus category that matches their annual sales. We want to find what was the next level of bonus category had they earned even more money. So for example, someone earning $149,000 is currently in the $100,000 category. The next level up would be the $200,000 category. To do this, we need to be a little bit creative. We are still going to use index and match. So equals index. The array we're looking for is the first column over here. And again, you could specify this as I2 to I8 if you wanted to as well. I've already named the table, so that's why it's looking up this way. The row number we're looking for is the one after the one that matches the annual sales we're in. So here we're going to say match. The lookup value is still the annual sales amount. The lookup array is still our array of salaries. Our match type here is a less than match. So we'll type in one. I close the brackets here. This right here, as you know, will return 100,000 because that is the salary where we're at least 100,000, but not up to 200,000. To get to that next row, we need to add one here. Now when I close the bracket, I'm going to get an answer of 200,000. Now I can calculate by how much they missed the next bonus category by subtracting 200,000 minus 149,000. And finally, I can check whether or not that amount is less than $15,000 equals if that is less than 15,000, then yes, otherwise no. And you could use true or false here if you wanted to as well. So one or zero. Okay, so we've got the first row completed here. We want to copy that all the way down without ruining my formatting. The easiest way to do that is to copy all of this to the clipboard. Control C. Highlight the range over which you want to paste it. Alt E, S, and here we want to paste the formulas. So we click on formulas and say OK. And that copies the formula all the way down without getting rid of my nice dark line over here. Just to show you, had I done it the other way and just double clicked, that's what would have happened and it looks awful. All right, the next thing we need to look up here is how many of these people were within $15,000 of the next bonus category. And this we're going to use a very simple count if. Equals count if. Specify your range. My criteria is yes. We put that in quotes. We hit enter. And we can see that four people were within the next bonus category. 
I realize you could have just counted these, but if you had a million rows of data, that's not something you'd want to do. The next question is a little trickier. How many accountants were within $15,000 of the next bonus category? And what you may or may not know is that you can actually use wildcards with the COUNTIF or COUNTIFS functions. So let me show you how we would do this. Equals COUNTIFS. There's two criteria here. Open a bracket. My first criteria that I'm looking for is whether or not they earned less than $15,000. So let's look for whether or not column F is equal to yes. Highlight the range. My criteria is yes. My second criteria range that I'm looking for is whether or not their job title has the word account or accountant in it. And if we look over here, the only thing common between financial accountants, managerial accountants, and maybe accounting professors, and I will count accounting professors here, is the word account. So highlight the range G2 to G9, and the criteria I'm looking for, put it in quotes, is anything that has the word account in it. So we can say star account star. And what this will do is it will look for anything that contains the letters A-C-C-O-U-N-T, and when I see that, I get two. That corresponds to Mike, who's our managerial accountant, and Ruby, who's our accounting professor. And again, I recognize that an accounting professor may or may not be an accountant per se, but just for the purpose of teaching this, I think that this makes sense, or I hope this makes sense.